Previously, we have talked about innate immunity. In this episode, we will introduce adaptive immunity, immunity acquired by adaptation or by learning. The effectors of adaptive immunity are the lymphocytes. They adapt when exposed to invaders. There are two types of adaptive immunity. One is against extracellular antigens. This is called humoral immunity. The other is against intracellular antigens. This is called cellular immunity. The lymphocytes are produced in the bone marrow and are morphologically similar. The difference lies in the training. B cells mature in the bone marrow and T cells mature in the thymus gland. The B lymphocytes are like an artillery that produces projectiles that are very specific for the offender against which they are deployed. These projectiles are called antibodies and they are responsible for humoral immunity. T lymphocytes, on the other hand, are like assault troops. They themselves attack and neutralize cells carrying known offenders. This is what cellular immunity is. Lymphocytes can be considered the army of the body, which is divided into battalions called clones. Each clone is a group of lymphocytes that are specific to a single offending agent called an antigen. There are millions of antigens out there. Accordingly, there are millions of lymphocyte clones in the human body. Total number of lymphocytes in the human body are around 10 to the 12. The number of clones within these lymphocytes is 10 to the 7th to 10 to the 9th. Accordingly, each clone has about 1,000 to 100,000 lymphocytes that are trained to respond only to single specific antigen. It is important to note that the number of antigens attacking the body run in the billions, orders of magnitude more than the total number of genes in the human genome. If each lymphocyte's receptors are restricted to a single antigen, then each receptor cannot specifically be encoded by a germline gene or an inherited gene because the number of such antigens is much larger than the number of genes. This task is accomplished by somatic recombination of genes. And this is the process of maturation that occurs in the thymus for T and bone marrow for B lymphocytes. Just as a tailor can cut and stitch a piece of cloth to make a shirt or a suit, Maturation process in the lymphocytes leads to the cutting of DNA and tailoring of an existing gene segment to form new variations. The master tailors in this case are genes themselves, RAG1 and RAG2, that produce enzymes to affect such changes. RAG stands for recombination activating gene, an apt name for genes that recombine existing genes. Each recombined gene can then code for a unique receptor for the lymphocyte that it is in. The practical point is that normal lymphoid tissue will have multiple clones of lymphocytes in it, or in other words, it will be polyclonal. Lymphoid tissue that exhibits only one type of lymphocyte is called monoclonal and is cancerous or neoplastic because all the cells in such tissue have descended from proliferation of a single lymphocyte that went awry. Thus, essays to determine the clonality of lymphocytes in lymphoid tissue can determine neoplastic lymphoid tissue from the non-neoplastic ones. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed.